Taking pretty bad there. That's no bueno. Let's put it in drive. Oh god. And it doesn't want to accelerate. Okay. Let's go ahead and check out that check engine light. See what we got. Now usually when that check engine light blinks like that, and it doesn't go anywhere, more than likely you got an ignition problem, whether it be a spark plug uh, fouled out or an ignition coil fouled out and uh, possibly an injector, but I doubt it because uh, I can smell a uh, really bad fuel uh, smell and uh, more than likely that fuel is not getting uh, burned and uh, yeah, and it's going through your cat. So I need to take care of this quick because you don't want fuel in your catalytic converter because you'll be replacing a catalytic converter. You probably get that code 420 and uh, that's not good. So uh, let's go ahead, check that check engine light out and uh, we'll go from there. Yes, I'm using old school Snap-on Solus because I am old but it still does the job now most mechanics would just tell you the uh, the engine code and then go from there saying it's misfiring you know like a p0304 or you know or 303 or 302 or 301 but what I do I want to go to the live data I want to look at all four of the um, cylinders and see which one is actually misfiring so that's what we're gonna do now now I know you guys can't see this real good because I have a hell of a glare here, but if I go to live data and you can see right here on cylinder three, it is misfiring really, really bad. So like I said, it could be either a uh, spark plug or a coil pack, but I'm gonna show you guys how you can decipher which one it is, either coil pack or the uh, spark plug. Now that we're in the engine bay, Unfortunately, yes, you have to move the intake box out so you can get to these coil packs and spark plugs down here. So let me grab my 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and I think they on it 10 millimeter. And let's see if we can take this thing on off. Now the cool thing is, somebody already labeled these coil packs. One, two, three, four. See, one, two, three, four. Now, yes, we're gonna have to take that bracket off to, to access the number four uh, coil. But the one that we're having questions about and problems with is number three. So, I'm gonna do something that you can do at home to make sure that it is a coil pack and not a spark plug. We're gonna swap the coil packs. We're gonna take number three and put it on two and then two put it on three because if it starts misfiring on number two, that means we got a bad coil pack. And if it still stays uh, on three misfiring, then we know we have a spark plug problem. So we're gonna go ahead and swap them out right now.
Now you just gotta put it back on the uh, intake hose. You don't have to put it, zip it all back down because we just don't want to throw any kind of mass airflow sensor codes and stuff. So just set it on here so we can go ahead and start this thing back up and see if that number three, or actually number two, is actually misfiring since number three is on number two. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, maybe you guys can see that a little better, I'm not sure. But we're gonna start this thing back up and see if it misfires on number two. So, go ahead and start it. Okay, now let's see if it starts misfiring on number two. And it does, check that out right there. So that means that we got a really bad coil pack and uh, we're gonna replace all four of them because they're actually pretty affordable and cheap. And of course they're cheap because I found the whole thing on Amazon. There we go. Looks like a smile, doesn't it? Hmm. Anyways, got all four uh, coil packs right here and I believe the spark plugs are in them too. So we're just gonna have to open up that package and if you want to grab some yourself, link in the description below on how to uh, get a very cheap set. When I say cheap, it doesn't mean that it's bad quality. When I say cheap, it means stuff that you, you can afford. I mean, the whole kit was only 60 bucks. I mean, I, f I think that's pretty good. Must be good quality. I mean, they wrapped it up pretty nice. Nice foam, and I believe these are the spark plugs. And yes, they are spark plugs. I believe they're in GKs. And here's all four of your coils. There we go. Check that out. That actually looks like some OE style coil packs. Nowadays, you don't really have to gap spark plugs because they're already gapped for you. And you can tell that the little plastic cap that sits on the end of them, take it on off because you're not going to gap that small little uh, nipple right there that's underneath that little metal thing there. Yeah, just don't do it. They're already pre-gapped, so don't try to gap them yourself. And what we're going to do is we're going to slide these things in with our fingers try not to drop them because then you will have to <laughs> probably try to gap them or something but anyways always when you're removing and installing spark plugs always use hand tools never an impact never an electric impact always use hand tools because if you crack the thing inside the uh the head then you're gonna have some really big problems
And here's the new coil packs. Sliding in like butter. and plug them all on up and I start from the back because you see how this harness goes that way it's just easier now all we need to do is put the, the four uh, 10 millimeter bolts back in there and uh, put the intake back on and then fire this thing up and make sure it doesn't uh, misfire anymore which it won't, I promise you that. Now these you can use an electric impact on or an air impact. But don't go crazy because you don't want to snap these things either. Right. Put the mounting plate back on for the intake that covers the number four ignition coil there. there and throw the intake back on. Make sure you go hose first because, like I said, you don't want that mass airflow sensor code to come because then it really won't work very, very well <laughs> now when your check engine light is blinking and flashing and going crazy and you can't accelerate and you smell fuel Nine times out of ten, it's going to be either the coil packs or the spark plugs. Now, this Toyota actually did pretty good. I mean, for 200,000 miles and it still has the original uh, coil packs in it, you can actually tell because they say Toyota on them. And overnight parts made in Japan. But, and it's got NGKs, but those could have been uh, replaced before some other time. But that's actually pretty sweet still has all of the OE um, coil packs in it. But unfortunately, one is bad. Now that we have four brand new coil packs installed and spark plugs, what you're gonna wanna do now is you're gonna wanna drive it because I'm sure that unburned fuel that was inside that one cylinder, uh, it needs to be burned out. And um, yeah. And you want to make sure that it's running right. And uh, also, we're going to check the check engine light. Make sure, I'm sorry, the live data. We're going to check live data and make sure it's not uh, misfiring. So let's go ahead and do that now. First thing is, let's make sure that that check engine light is not blinking. Oh, wow. So far, so good. Well, the check engine light's not blinking. That's a good thing. And when checking the live data, we have no more misfiring. All zeros. I think she accelerates now. Check engine light, not blinking. But the reason why it's not blinking is because we fixed the ignition problem and obviously <laughs> the acceleration problem but this uh, RAV4 has one more problem to take care of and that is the uh, shift solenoid B problem and I have done a video on this repair also which if you're having that type of problem I have a link right up in here you know to how to diagnose that so uh, good thing is it accelerates so this problem's fixed.